This is a footprint from the bestorderflow.com. The main difference is that you can see three columns in this footprint. One column is a left of the candle bar and two columns on the right side of the candle bar. This is a cluster view of the same footprint that you can see anomaly clusters and also a clusters zone. So this is a footprint manual for the best order flow that can. The main option is number one option as simple. It is the margin in pixels from the right side. How far the first bar will be from the right side. Currently it is 250 pixels. Next, the most important about this footprint is that it comprises of the three columns. First column on the left of the bar is designated for volumes. Second and third is for the bid and for the ask. Left side on the right side of the candle bar, left one is for the bid. And the third one is for the ask. Let's talk about the left side of the footprint and fine tune it to show our volumes in the way that we want it to. Volume can be calculated in a two different ways. It can be calculated by a bar. So the maximum volume here calculated from the data we have in this bar only. What we may select to calculate the volume, the maximum volume from the whole chart that visible on our screen from the visible area. So when we select the chart, the chart will calculate the maximum volume, not based on the bar volume, but on a total volume that presented on the visible chart area. Sometimes we want to squeeze the chart and we would like to make data no longer visible because we're looking for the macro picture what's going on. And now the data on the left and the right side is no longer visible. We can decide in pixels distance when we hide or show the data. So this is the hide distance in pixels selected as 25. That means between the bars there's at least 25 pixels for the data to be shown. Or if we squeeze the chart and there is a less than 25 pixels between the bars, then the data is no longer visible. Because this is a three column footprint, we may designate how much space we would like to provide only for volume on the left side of the candle bar and also for bid and ask or delta on the right side of the candle bar. The currently we selected right side is equal to 70% over here and 30% for the left side for the volume. We can fine tune how far from the candle bar we can have the columns on the left and the right. Here's the five pixels in distance that we selected between the candle and the left side left column data. This is the gap in five pixels. Now over here for sake of demonstration, 10 pixels between the candle bar and the right side of the data. This is the right side column and there is a 10 pixels I have selected right here. We also can separate the clusters vertically and provide this kind of the gap between one cluster and another cluster, if we wanted to. And there's a no gap over here because I selected zero for the right side clusters on the footprint. On the left, I have one, just for sake of demonstration. And now you see this gap with a one pixel. If we want to make a clusters really stand out on our chart, we can change the outline. And in this example, 
I decide to show the outline and I selected the white color for outline and for the text itself. So now you see this white outline on each cluster and the white text for the volume. Now let's take a look at the font and the way the font displayed on the footprint. You see um, color for the font, you see the size for the font, and you also can see that some font is in bold, like number 6 over here, number 10 over here. When we squeeze the chart, the chart will hide or make smaller the numbers on the footprint become less and less in size and at one point it will be completely hidden. Now there's no numbers on the left or right side of the footprint and how we achieve it? With the options under the section 2 we can fine-tune when the font will be hidden, but we can choose the font increment divider, rate how fast the font can be changed. Currently it is 7. We can choose the font, what kind of font it is, the mm, consoles right now. We may select the boldness of that, maximum font size, minimum font size, and fine tune the way the numbers displayed on the clusters. Under section 3, we can fine-tune the right side of the footprint. On the right side of the footprint, we can display bid and ask, like it is right now, bid on the left side and ask on the right side. Or, instead of bid and ask, we can select show us only a delta. And delta is the difference between bid and ask. It represents in a one single column on the right side of the candle. This footprint let us uh, display imbalances. For example, this green zone, it is the imbalance zone. And this um, bold luminant green color 6 and 11 and 9, it is the imbalance on a buying side. Or we can show the selling imbalance zone. This is the selling imbalance zone because those bold numbers on the bid side, 6 bold, 5 in bold, 8 in bold, and 6 in bold as well. We can fine-tune all of this information and how the uh, imbalances show up on our chart with the section 4, imbalances. Now, this imbalance in bold 6, I put in a border with green. How do we calculate imbalances? The imbalances, it is the aggressiveness on a one or another side. And the way we calculate aggressiveness is with the imbalance ratio is selected 210. 210 is the percent that each ask should be 200 or more than the bead in the diagonal calculations. Okay, so this is the buying imbalances. This is buying imbalances. This is single buying imbalances. And this is single buying imbalances. And same over here in bold. In this example, we can see the difference between these two is equal or more than 210%. So let's take a look over here. That the bead equal to 1 is less than 6 for 200 or more percent. And the bead 4 is less than 11 on the right side for the ask. The same for the bead here, 5 and 15. Okay, which is actually happens right here. 5 and 15 over here. So this is the condition for the imbalance ratio calculations that you can adjust according to whatever the instrument you're working in a time frame. It may be a different. And same for the selling imbalances. The selling imbalances, I decided to show it with this color, magenta, represent with the numbers that ask tree is 200% less 
than 11. The same with the 0 and 12. 5 and 15, which is right here. 5 and 15, 12 and 0, and 11 and 3. So this is the 200% difference between the bid and ask in a diagonal calculations. So the imbalances are highlighted with a bold and a color on each side, which you can select under the this option for properties. There's a many different ways you can select the style, the way it looks, the way it feels, the colors, all of that for the imbalance how the imbalance numbers looks like and how the imbalance zones looks like. There is a single imbalances and there is a zone imbalance zone. The imbalance zone calculates by the number three, which I selected over here. If there is a tree or more imbalances close to each other and there is a no gap, vertical gap between them, then it become a zone. So this is the selling imbalance zone and this is the buying imbalance zone. The imbalance zone can be continued to the right or can be closed by conditions that we selected. So there are some imbalances like this uh, or even this one is still going to the right unless there is a two conditions met. We can close this zone or any of these imbalance zones because we may select how it's gonna get crossed by. If it crossed by the POC like in this scenario, this imbalance zone crossed by point of control of this candle, this candle, and this is the point of control. It's already passed that zone so this zone is no longer continuous to the right but this one is continuous to the right it's not closed because it's not crossed by point of control of this candle and that's where we can select it how we close the zone with the point of control or simply the zone will be closed if the price will go over this zone and this zone will no longer keep going to the right. It will be closed right over here. And there is uh, other options to show or close the zones. Uh, for example, with the end of the session, so you no longer will see the zone continues on the new session. And you may select to show all historical zones right over here. Under the section 5, we can select how we would like to display absorption. This is the buying absorption. And this is the selling absorption. There's actually two selling absorption right here. In order for absorption to being display on the chart, we need to have three conditions met. Three conditions. Now, the first condition is the ratio. That's the way we calculate. So the imbalance should be at least 400%, not 210, but 400%. In this example, an example of the buying absorption, we have the 12. 12 is the imbalance. It is the selling imbalance. And the 12 is 400% higher than two. So that's the first condition. The second condition is we should filter by volume. Okay, this is filter by volume. This is the ratio of 400%. This is the second filter by volume that the volume should be no less than 10. And obviously 12 is more than the filter 10. That's why it shows. And the third condition is depth that we may select right here is the six ticks. So the price from here travel at least six ticks. This is the price line. In order for our absorption become visible 
as a signal to us. So the selling absorption over here calculates that we have a buying imbalance. This is the buying imbalance, okay? 19, which is more than two for 400% or more. 19 is also, according to our filterer, is 19 is more than 10. So it's valid. And now we can see that the price travel from this area, when it travel more than six ticks, which we selected over here as a depth, then imbalance become visible to us as a signal. And a selling absorption, what does it mean selling absorption? That means all these extreme buyers with their imbalances no longer able to move the price up and it become a signal for us for sale. And the same for the buying absorption. On the buying absorption, we see that sellers, aggressive sellers, they create imbalance. They try to sell, but all their sales were absorbed and no longer move the price down. That's why the buying absorption means a potential signal to buy. So the price actually went higher and it created a green candle. Now let's talk about the bar POC. POC means a point of control for each bar, which represent by the maximum volume in the bar. So 65 is obviously more than 51, 45 and 37. So this is the POC area for this bar. And we may decide if the POC will be uh, shown to us only on the left side, only on the right side, or on both sides, like it is right now, on both sides. We may select the color, we may select the uh, overlay opacity, overlay color, we may select the border if we wanted to, and so far I selected the yellow because that's the, my favorite color for the POC. And under section 7 we can fine-tune how the footprint style for a volume look like. So there's a many different options like the, like the color of the each cluster or the, the font so it become uh, visible on this background and with the text filter for volume we decide to show only if the volume more than 70 or equal or more than 70 so now we we hide all of these volumes over here because it's less than 70 and show the volume that is 70 or more under the same section seven footprint style for volume we also have a special way to tune our cluster's zone. This cluster zone has become visible because we use 150 as a filter and a zone filter for volume. So now we don't see every other cluster on the left side. We can see only clusters for 150 and larger the same with this cluster zone. This cluster zone is filtered out because it is higher than 150. And we can select the, the way that this zone is get closed by the POC. If this is the candle and the POC is kind of crossed that zone, then it's become closed. Okay, no longer continues to the right. Or if we select that zone can be closed by the price line. If the price is kind of achieving this cluster zone and crossing this zone, then this zone is no longer keep to the right. It will be closed. If you want to see clusters only and cluster zones, you can fine tune with a section two, three and seven, like it's done over here. Section two, three, 
and 7. So now you can fine tune to show clusters, the individual clusters like this one, and zones like this zone or this zone. And you can see that clusters play a significant role as the support and resistance zones. There is a extreme cluster sitting right here and right here. And the price actually bounced back from this zone and traveled down to another cluster. It founds this cluster and you see reaction from this cluster again. So this cluster zones become really powerful support and resistance zone that is not visible if you just uh, consider a price actions. We can fine tune the right side of the candle bar. So if we select bid and ask over here, we can see two columns left for the bid and right for the ask left for the bid and right for the ask or we can choose to show us only a delta which represents the difference between bid and ask and show us in the one single column right of the candle and there's a uh, many different styling options we can select uh, over here to fine tune how our bid area this is the area and how the numbers on the bid text looks like on a bid and the ask for example this is the ask area and how the text is standing out on the background for the bid and for the ask